Hi there, I'm Chelsea York and I'm the Education Coordinator with the Georgia Forestry Commission. Take a moment and look at your surroundings. Likely something within your reach comes from a tree or contains a tree byproduct. Many of us think about tree products and when we do we think of things like our paper and pencils and maybe even the wood and lumber that goes into our houses or building desks or chairs. But what if I told you that you could find tree byproducts in things like your smartphone screens, your crayons, chewing gum, or even in your ice cream? You probably wouldn't believe me, but it's true. Scientists have found that all parts of a tree, big and small, provide an abundance of valuable resources and materials that are now used in thousands of common products to improve our everyday lives. One of the most common products is paper. Let's go find out how you can make your own. Before you begin, make sure that you have an adult who can help you. You will need the following materials. Warm water, recycled or scrap paper, a blender, a decal, which is a nylon or metal screen that's set into a wooden frame, a plastic bin or pan, sponges, old towels or pillowcases, and a piece of old cardboard so that you can place your paper on when you finish. The paper making process begins when trees are harvested. Some trees are chipped at the harvesting site. Other trees are sent to the mill. The mills have large machines that strip the bark away and then shred those trees into tiny chips. These wood chips then go through a process that breaks them down into even smaller pieces that are mixed with water and other chemicals to create pulp. Now that we have our materials, it's time for the fun part. We want to begin by making our pulp. So what you'll need to do first is have your blender ready and you want to loosely fill it with your recycled paper. Once you have it loosely filled, you'll want to add water. And you'll fill your blender about halfway with the warm water. Now that you have your paper and warm water in your blender, you want to securely place the lid on top and then we're gonna blend. Now I want you to blend it until you no longer see chunks of paper and it's a soupy consistency. All right, so now that we've blended and started making our pulp, what you'll wanna do is take your lid off and make sure that it's the right consistency. You may notice that your pulp looks like it has fibers in it. Those fibers are called cellulose. It is what provides structure in our plants and trees. These fibers hold our paper together and gives it strength. So once your mixture has reached the consistency in your bin, what you wanna do is fill it about a quarter of a way with water, which I've already done here. And then we're gonna pour our soupy slush over into our bin. And don't be afraid to get in there and mix it with your hands. Now, before we move on to our next step, let's take a moment and check back in at the mill. The pulp in the mills begins as a brown mixture. Sometimes chemicals are added to make it the pretty white paper that we're used to seeing. Once their pulp is made, it's sprayed onto these large screens where the excess water is drained. So next, what we wanna do is take our decals and you're gonna dip it down into your slurry. So as you dip, you wanna reach down to the bottom of your container and you want to shake it gently as you come up and allow the excess water to drain. You're looking for a nice, even coating of pulp on your screen. If you notice that it's a little thin or you have parts of your screen showing, don't be afraid to put it back in and go back to step one. Just add a little bit more paper and water, blend, and add it back to your slurry and try again. 
in the mill. Once the paper has been sprayed onto the large screens and all the excess water is drained from there, it goes through these massive rollers. And these rollers can be heated and they help pull away all the remaining water and liquid and dries the paper. Instead of passing our paper through large dryers, we're gonna take our decal and gently set it down on our towels. Next, take your cut up t-shirt or pillowcases and gently place it over the top of your decal. Now what I want you to do is take your sponge and gently press down on your pulp and on your decal to remove any of the excess water. Once you feel you've gotten most of your excess water out, you can remove your sponge, take your hand, place it on top of your decal, grab your frame and gently flip it over. From here, you're gonna to try to remove your paper from your decal. So you can do so by tapping on the back. And let's see if that worked. If that doesn't work, you can simply peel it off like you would lint on a dryer screen. If you feel like there's still a lot of moisture in your paper, you can cover it with another piece of t-shirt or pillowcase and try to absorb any excess moisture again. Now that we've removed most of the moisture, we're gonna transfer it onto our piece of cardboard so that it can finish drying. So gently bring it over Remove your top layer of fabric and then you can slide it off or you can flip it over. Once you have it on your cardboard, you can take it and place it in a nice sunny place to finish drying. Be sure to check out Project Learning Tree's activity, Make Your Own Paper. View and download this sample activity at plt.org. You can also find more information on our forests and products at gatrees.org. I don't know about you, but I had so much fun making paper today. I even made my own notebook and we'd love to see what you created. So be sure to tag us in your photos on social at Georgia Forestry Commission. Until next time.